Good morning, Ow. GCC kids. It's Betty the Bear here. And I'm Penny the Pup. Sorry, Penny. And we'll be your host today. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We're so glad you could all be here with us today. Um, Penny, I think you have to scoot back a little bit. Oh, okay. okay. Like, like like this? Um, no, here my hand, where my hand oh, is. Like right here? A little, yeah, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> We're so glad you're here today and we can't wait to worship with everyone. Mm -hmm. So last week we read about John the Baptist who was given a very important job to get everyone ready for Jesus' arrival by helping them prepare their hearts. Mm -hmm. And we learned that preparing our hearts doesn't mean we have to be perfect before we can start following Jesus. It just means that we have to keep repenting and turning away from our sins and choosing to believe in Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we ended last week with a special challenge to prepare our own hearts for Jesus mm -hmm. by spending time talking to Him and, and admitting that our hearts are sinful and that we need Him. Mm -hmm. So how was the challenge for you, Benny? Mm, it was a bit hard in the beginning, but it ended up being really, really good. Hard in the beginning? Why was it hard? Hmm. I think it was hard for me because the moment I started thinking about my sins and all the stuff that's not good, I realized I sinned a lot. Like, a lot. A lot more than I thought I did. Like, a lot, a lot. I understand what you mean. How did that make you feel? Mm, I think it made me feel kind of bad about myself, you know? And I just kept thinking about how I'm not good sometimes and sometimes like that I get upset with people around me or I'm not happy with something and I take it out on other people and it was just hard for me to believe that God could forgive someone as sinful as me and that he still chooses to love me even though I sin you know yeah I know I know exactly what you mean because I felt the same exact way yeah but then, but then I remembered that's this thing I always tell you, Penny, right? I say, God loves you for you and not what you can or cannot do for him or even how good you are for him. He just loves you because God just loves you. Yeah, you always tell me that. Yeah, and so even though I was sad about having to admit all my sins to God and, um, and I just... I, even though I was sad, I just kept trying to remind myself that God still loves me even though I'm not perfect and that it's okay for me not to be perfect. And I actually felt a lot better after I realized that. Aw, oh, Benny, I'm so glad you were able to remind yourself of that truth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what's so crazy? What? God already knows about all your sins even before you start admitting and repenting. And you know, he still chooses to love you yeah. and me and all of you. Yeah. And that's how much he loves us. Yeah. God really does love us so, so much. Thanks for the reminder, Penny. Mm -hmm. God loves you guys. Yeah, <laughs> he loves you. Yeah. So everyone, let's close our eyes and let's bow our heads and let's put our hands together and pray for today's service. Mm -hmm. Dear Jesus. Thank you for today that we could all come together to worship you and to learn more about you. Thank you for loving us so, 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 so much and reminding us that we don't have to be perfect to follow you and um, help us to keep repenting and choosing to follow you no matter what. Please be with Teacher Tess and Teacher Crystal as we lead our time together today and with all of us as we listen. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey Ben, thanks for praying for us, Penny. No problem. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for worship time. Worship time. Worship time. It's That's time for worship. Right. Worship, worship time. Worship, worship time. In worship. just a few moments, worship. Teacher worship. Tessa and Teacher worship. Crystal will lead us in a time of worship. Yeah, and this week we'll be singing. This is amazing grace and. He is the light, 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 light of, of the, the world. I love that song. It makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, me too. Mm. So let's all stand up for where we're sitting and take a step back from our screen so we have enough room to move our arms and our legs during worship. Mm -hmm. And everyone sing as loudly as you can as we follow along. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. Woo!
God is so awesome. Amen. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I'm okay. It's just, 
it's just so beautiful to worship God and seeing everyone else worship together too is just so beautiful. Penny, now I'm emotional because anyways. It's okay, it's okay Penny, you to be you, emotional. Uh, thank you. You just you can Okay, okay, I'll, I'll so yeah, we're just really glad to be able to worship together. Yeah. Even though we can't physically be together yet, but you know, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. So let's keep praying, okay? Yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in person. Yeah. But it's okay because now now, Penny, it's time. It's time for Bible, Bible story, time! story time. Bible story time. Bible story time. And this week, we're gonna read about how God chose his. Oh, um, how Jesus chose his twelve disciples. What's a disciple? That's a great question, Penny. I don't know. So we'll find out together. <laughs> okay, everyone, let's take our seats again and get really comfy, and let's keep our eyes and ears open so we can hear this story from Teacher Tess and Teacher Crystal today. Okay? I'm so excited. Me too. Let's go. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. everyone. Happy Sunday. And thank you for joining us this Sunday. We're so glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to read a story about how Jesus chose his 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. And hopefully by the end of the story, you'll know what a disciple is. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. After Jesus was baptized, he went straight out into the desert. That might seem like an odd place to go because, as you know, deserts are very hot, and there isn't any food or water or places to stay. But Jesus needed to get away by himself and be somewhere quiet and lonely. He needed to be with his heavenly Father to get ready for his new life. In the desert, Jesus thought about the secret rescue plan he had made with God. Before the foundation of the world, they both knew what would have to happen. To rescue God's children, Jesus would have to die. There was no other way. It was the reason he had come. Now, that old enemy, the one who had spoken through the snake to Adam and Eve back in the garden, remember him? He didn't want Jesus to rescue God's people, so he lied to Jesus. Are you really God's own son? He whispered. Poor you. God must not love you. You don't need to die. Do it my way. Yes. And no, Jesus said to the liar, I will do what God says. And from that moment on, nothing would ever be the same. Jesus wasn't like Adam. Jesus was a new kind of man. He would not believe the terrible lie that the enemy spoke. Jesus knew God loved him and he would trust God no matter what. And it was just as God had promised to Adam and Eve all those years before. Jesus had come to do battle against the snake's work. He would get rid of the sin and the darkness and the tears, and he would suffer, but he would win. Jesus left the desert and set about the great rescue. He was going to get God's people back. But first, he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do. He would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers, do you think? Clever ones, rich ones, strong, important ones? Some people might think so, but I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you that you'd be wrong. Because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of things. They just need him a lot. One day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. They were poor fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Let's go! Peter, Andrew, James, and John looked up at this man on the shore, and they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away, their nets needed mending, fish were still wriggling on the shore. But something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and their fish, leave their boats and everything, and follow him. This God-man was like no one they had ever met. When they looked at Jesus, their hearts filled up with a wonderful, forever sort of happiness, and inside it was as if they were running free in an open field. Jesus asked 12 men to be his helpers. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, another James, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas. Meeting Jesus would change all of them forever. The, the end. end. Thank you, Teacher Tess and Teacher Crystal, for sharing that story with us today. You know, after hearing that story, I remembered I've heard of those disciples before, but I just didn't know they were called disciples. 
Me too.、Mm-hmm. I always wondered who those men following Jesus around were called, but I guess they were his disciples.、Mm-hmm. And in the story, he even calls them his helpers. So I guess a disciple is someone who helps whoever they're following. Oh, I get it. You know what's crazy though? What? Jesus didn't even know them before he chose them.、Yeah. He was just walking around by the Sea of Galilee and saw some poor fishermen and, that were out at sea on a boat. He was just like, let's go.、Mm. Let's go. Yeah. But you know what's even crazier than that? What? The men just dropped all their stuff on the spot and left to go follow him, even though they didn't even know him either. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what's even crazier than that? What? The men Jesus chose to be his helpers were just, they were just poor fishermen. They weren't anything that special or great or even super rich.、Mm. I always thought that Jesus' helpers would be people who were super special with super special talents or super rich with lots of money, you know?、Mm. That is amazing now that I think about it. That Jesus chose random men, he saw it out sea, and he said, Be my helpers! And then、mm. those same men, Dropped what they were doing and they left everything to follow Jesus, even though they didn't even know him.、Mm-hmm. And those same men ended up just being normal people like you and, and me and all of you. They didn't have super special talents or、uh, like a bajillion dollars.、Mm. I guess it really is true that Jesus doesn't love us because of what we can do. He、mm-hmm. just simply chooses to love us for who we are, not what we can do for him.、Mm-hmm. Mm. And just like his disciples, He didn't choose them because they were super special. He just, he just, he just chose them because.、Mm-hmm. And he just loved them because. Yeah. Oh man, I wonder what it'll be like when we meet Jesus one day. I think, I think it'll be amazing. Yeah, like amazing.、Mm-hmm. Like, he's the light, like that、light. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And in the story, it said that when the disciples looked at Jesus, their, their hearts filled up with a wonderful, forever sort of happiness. And inside, it was as if they were running free in an open field. Yeah, that's what I feel like after worship. It's so nice. That's so amazing. I can't wait to see Jesus in person. Yeah,、hmm. me too. So, last week, guys, we read about John the Baptist, who was given the most important job to help get everyone ready for Jesus' arrival by helping them prepare the way by preparing their hearts.、Mm-hmm. And we learned that preparing our hearts doesn't mean that we have to be perfect before we can begin to follow Jesus. It just means that we need to repent and turn away from our sins and choose to believe.、Mm-hmm. And then today, we talked about how Jesus chose normal, everyday people like you and me to be his disciples and to be his special helpers to help him spread his teaching to other people.、Mm-hmm. And he didn't choose them because they had any special superpowers or、mm-hmm. they were super rich or they could give him something.、Mm-hmm. Jesus just chose them because, and you know, just, just because he loved them. Yeah. So this week, our challenge is to remind ourselves that God doesn't love us because of what we can or cannot do for Him.、Mm-hmm. He simply chooses to love us for who we are and not what we can give Him.、Mm-hmm. His love is completely free. free. So, our challenge is to freely give our love to other people too without、mm-hmm. asking for anything or expecting anything in return.、Mm-hmm. How's that sound? That sounds, that sounds like a great idea, Benny.、Mm, I'm excited for this week. Okay, everyone, let's put our hands together and let's close our eyes and let's close in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you that even though sometimes we feel small and like maybe we're not the most important or the strongest or the richest or the coolest, God, you choose normal, everyday people just like us. And thank you, Lord, for this reminder that we don't have to do anything to earn your love. You already love us perfectly. And I pray for our challenge this week as we try to show the same love to other people. Help us, God, to love everyone freely and with generous hearts and the same way that you love us. So thank、mm-hmm. you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks for praying for us, Benny. Of course. <sighs> and, and now it's our time to say. Goodbye. Goodbye! Just kidding. I'm sad, but I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> and we really hope you had a great time this week with us,、mm-hmm. and you have an even better week next week. Yeah! <laughs>
and we'll see you in seven days. <laughs> and don't forget about our challenge, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. We love you guys. See you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. Bye.